store it, you go put your thing in there. If you're against it, you put it there. Okay, so are you ready for me? Can I have another one? Because I want to do three or four of them on the way out. Pro con, pro. What about America's first offshore wind farm? The proposal for America's first offshore wind farm, 130 turbines standing 417 feet high in the waters off Cape Cod and the islands, had become the hottest debate Cape Cod and the area had seen in a long time. From polling for fun at a local restaurant to official hearings staged by the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, the local population was challenged to develop an educated opinion on the Cape Wind project. But it was far more than a local debate, as the reality of dwindling oil supplies fought with the effects of global warming for headlines, it had become clear that America had to join the global community in moving away from oil dependency and its disastrous effects. And the first and most significant opportunity for America's turn from fossil fuels lay in the Cape Wind proposal. The developer's vision of 420 megawatts provided by clean renewable wind power was the first significant renewable energy power plant proposed for America. The outcome of this debate had far-reaching implications for America's essential move into renewable energy solutions. While there were many positive aspects immediately recognized in the Cape Wind proposal, including supplying three-quarters of the area's energy needs, price stability, elimination of greenhouse gases, reduction in the area's high rate of asthma attacks and fatalities, and energy independence. There were serious questions about real estate values, tourism, wildlife, navigation, fishing, and the view which needed answering as well. As the investigation led by the Army Corps of Engineers went forward with 17 different agencies on board, a collection of local energy professionals and environmentalists formed Clean Power Now in 2003. To properly and honestly evaluate the view and the vision of an offshore wind farm, Clean Power Now members William and Dorta Griswold orchestrated a tour to Denmark to visit the world's largest offshore wind farm, comparable to the one proposed for Cape Cod. Video producer Liz Argo brought back on video the view from the beaches, as well as candid interviews with the residents. Um, at first we were a little skeptical because we thought that perhaps uh, it would be a problem with the tourists. But um, as it has shown that isn't so, and then um, after that we've become grandparents and now we see how wonderful it is that we have clean energy for our children and grandchildren. When I heard there would be a wind farm there, I think that'd be awful, a lot of windmill. Oh, what was the area? People wouldn't like it and you, all the questions come in my head. But now I have seen it. Now I have heard our customer here in Down Center, uh, they say, they love it, it's a new Attraction. In every case, the Horns Rev wind farm was proudly reported to be a clean, renewable, stable energy resource with no repercussions to tourism, real estate values, fishing, navigation, or wildlife. We're really glad they're here. In November 2004, the draft environmental impact statement was released by the Army Corps of Engineers. It was favorable reinforcing the findings from the Clean Power Now trip to Denmark. Yet despite the determinations, the opposition continued to question the data. Nantucket Sound should not be turned into an industrial experiment with uncertain economic safety and environmental impacts. We believe that the speculative and wishful thinking suggests that somehow Cape cars will be involved to any great degree in a new industry wrapped around 130 turbines in Nantucket Sound. Thus, in 2005, Clean Power Now decided to return to Denmark for further evidence of the success of the Danish offshore wind industry. For during the American debate, the Danish offshore wind industry had been steadily growing. In fact, a new wind farm had come online in late 2004. Evidence from the new 72 turbines only six miles off from the harbor of Newstead, combined with further evidence from the Horns Rev wind farm with now two years of track record for evaluation, should go a long way in relaxing the opposition's fears and uncertainties. In Denmark, wind is providing 20% of that nation's energy supply and accounting for 20,000 jobs in the Danish economy. 
Denmark's vision of clean, renewable wind energy and the successes or disappointments needed to be brought back to Cape Cod and, and America again. This time, a group of 35, which included three journalists, a columnist, two video producers, and a professional photographer, would visit two offshore wind farms and make a visit to Vestas, the manufacturer of the Horns Rev wind turbines. The visit was scheduled to help put to rest the opposition's claims that the Horns Rev wind farm was a failure. Lars, you're the representative here from Vestas, the manufacturer of the wind farm equipment on Horns Rev. We've heard from the opposition to the Nantucket Sound wind farm that the Horns Rev wind farm is, is dismantled and is not functioning. Is that true? It is true that it was dismantled, yes, but it's not true that it's not functioning. It's since December last year have been operated very well. All the turbines are back in line, everything is working fine. So everything is fixed and it's all back Everything's in Everything is fixed and back in line again, yeah. Next on the list was a visit to the Danish Ministry of the Environment for their first-hand report on bird behavior and the effects of the wind farm after two years of studies at the Horns Rev site. Yeah, what this figure shows basically is the, the dominant orientation of the autumn migration as birds come down from the north and east and go predominantly towards the south and west. And you can see this happens both sides of the wind farm here. Thomas is sitting here observing with the radar in the transformer station and these green rows represent the, the actual positions of all the turbines. What I hope you can see is that there's a, a dearth of bird movements within the turbines, within the wind farm area. Now, partly that's due to the fact that there is some radar shadow that comes from the individual turbines. But nevertheless, you can very clearly see on this northward edge that a lot of birds are coming down, turning, and then going along the edge of the park. And a lot of those that do actually go between the turbines go right down between the rows. About 400 meters out from the turbines are beginning to alter their orientation and move around to avoid actually going into the wind farm. We have very similar experience from Neustadt as well, that a large number, a large proportion of the birds coming towards the wind farm choose to uh, avoid it altogether. So most of the, the birds actually pass around, deflect in their orientation and pass around the, wind, the whole wind farm. Excellent. Some people use the figure as a meter stick or yard stick that uh, offshore wind farm may kill one bird per turbine per year. Is that anywhere near accurate? I think at the moment it's impossible for us to, to put any facts on, on the bones of that statement. Uh, obviously there is going to be collisions, there's no doubt about it. Yeah, during heavy fog situations, uh, we can obviously not use our telescopes, but uh, by radar, we had some very few uh, recordings. Uh. Every so often there's, un there's undoubtedly going to be a mortality event. And what, what, what for us as advisors to government is an issue uh, is, is, is the effects of climate change. That obviously if we don't do something and if we continue, continue to contribute carbon dioxide to the air at the rate we are, there is going to be such changes to the climate that a lot of these birds, their distribution will change substantially. And that's, that's the sort of issue I think we're wrestling with because it's very hard to quantify those, those two issues. That, that feels like the ongoing debate. Well, there's absolutely no doubt if you look at the, the trajectory in temperatures, global temperatures, both locally and on a planetary level, something is happening. And there is no doubt that that something that is happening parallels the uh, emission of greenhouse gases over the period that it's been occurring. So we as biologists can try and quantify the effect and then say what effect is it going to have on the population. But at the same time, of course, we have to think about what's going to happen if we don't try and check climate change what's going to happen to the populations then. We have considerable responsibility to think how we manage this planet. Are they there at all? Yeah, it's, where are they? They're 